start, there is an announcement uh, in the auditorium number one. There will be, immediately after this talk, there will be a talk by Jorge Vittorio Pereira. Uh, he will talk about singular foliation with trivial canonical class. Okay? So immediately after this talk, there is another talk there by Jorge Vittorio. The, uh, uh, Eduardo told me that at six it will leave. Uh, well, immediately after this talk, there will be a talk by Jorge Vittorio Pereira in Auditorium One. Okay? After this talk. You want to kill us? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, uh, the information is that the bus will leave at 6. Okay, so next talk, uh, the last of this uh, session here, uh, is by Philippe Jimenez from Valladolid. We'll talk on the multigraded Betty numbers of an edge ideal. Thank you, Abramo. Obrigado. Well, I will first thank the organizers for inviting me here. It's always a pleasure to be here with you all <laughs> and to talk here. So um, I won't say anything about Stephen Aron now. <laughs> I'll do it at the end of the talk, very short. Uh, I prefer starting with the math. And uh, so this is a joint work with uh, Oscar Fernandez who is finishing his PhD thesis now. And even if it's not a joint work with Aron, uh, he has to do with the work anyway, besides the fact that uh, edge ideas uh, came from him and uh, Rafael Villarreal and Vome. Also, the very beginning of this story started for, with a very small question in uh, our joint work on polar syzygies with Isabel, and we left a very small question there, and then the, the thesis of Oscar grew. So this was the root of everything, as always. <laughs> so um, this is the outline of the talk. I will first introduce the notations and the, the objects we will work with. Then we'll say something about the shape of the Betty diagram of edge ideas in general, and then talk about two things, the regularity 2Ks and the regularity 3Ks in the case of bipartite graphs. I will say why uh, at some moment. So this is um, uh, a work which uh, is in between a commutative algebra and combinatorics. So I will start from the commutative algebra side, then I will show the bridge, and then go to the combinatorial side. So uh, here, uh, R will be a polynomial ring in n variables over an arbitrary field. And we consider, uh, if we have a homogeneous ideal in R, uh, uh, the minimal graded free resolution of I. And as everybody knows, uh, we call the graded beta numbers of I the number of minimal generators of degree g uh, at the i step, uh, j at the i step of the resolution. Okay, so the minimal free resolution uh, shows um, like this, as for example, uh, Claudia showed in his her talk this morning. Uh, so, um, so we collect at each step uh, the degrees and count how many we have uh, in each degree. Okay. So uh, the Betty numbers are important in variance, and in, in particular, in the, in the resolution, we have the projective dimension, which is the size of the resolution, uh, which is the, the last step here. How far we go, we, we know that this uh, stops by uh, Hilbert CCG theorem. So the, the last step of the resolution is the projective dimension and the Castelnuovo Manfred regularity that appeared in Israel's talk this morning uh, is uh, nothing but the maximum of all the degrees minus the step where they appear. 
in the resolution. Okay? So, um, usually this numerical information uh, on the Betty numbers uh, is stored in a box, uh, which is called the Betty diagram of I. So, just, this is not quite um, so standard, so just in an example, I would like to explain clearly how we store the, this numerical information, because this will be very important in the talk. So, this is an example, a very simple ideal, monomial ideal of degree 2, and that's its minimal graded through resolution that we can get using Cocoa, Singular, uh, Macaulay, Macaulay 2, whatever you want. And uh, so that's what, uh, how it shows. So uh, this means that we have nine minimal generators of degree two, which are the nine de um, uh, monomials that appear here. So we put a nine here just to say that at the zero step of the resolution, there are nine generators of degree two. This is the step, these are the steps, and these are the degrees. And then we have 16 first syzygies of degree 3. And this 16, we put it here. This means that when we read this, the, the 16 means that there are 16 generators of degree, uh, of degree 2 plus 1, which is 3, at the first step of the resolution. Why do we do this? Uh, well, in fact, the minimal degrees strictly increase in, in, in all the resolution. So it's, uh, uh, this way we, uh, we save uh, space. Because if, if there is a 9 here, if we would put the, the 16 de uh, generators in degree 3, we know that this is a 0, and this would be anything. Here it's 16. So we put it here because we know that nothing will appear before this row. OK? So also, if we do this that way, so this, this is this 16. This, this 9 means that at the step 2 of the resolution, there are 9 generators of degree 4, which is 2 plus 2. OK? And this 1 will appear here. And the rest is 0. And this is the Betty diagram, which encodes the numerical information of the resolution. This 1 means that at the third step, there is one single CCG of degree 3 plus 3, which is 6. OK? Well, so of course, the simplest Betty diagram that you can have is one where there is only one row, and those ones are called ideals with a linear resolution. Because this would be important. So if we do this, then by definition, if you look at the Castanova Manfred regularity here, you can read it in the Betty diagram, and it's the last degree that appears here, 3. OK. So just let me say one thing, even if it, uh, I would not enter into details in the, in the talk, but in the work, it's very important. In fact, we will deal with uh, monomial ideals here. So um, monomial ideals are also the homogeneous ideals in the polynomial ring, which are homogeneous and graded, say, with respect with the uh, end, the n to the n multigrading. So we can consider in R instead of the usual n, uh, n grading, which gives this resolution, we could consider the n to the n multigrading, and we would get a multigraded resolution, which would give a finer information, a finer numerical information. Well, the, the degrees would not be integers. There would be uh, elements in n to the n. But for once we have the, the Betty numbers, which are defined the same way, if we put together the ones of the same degree, total degree, we would get the graded Betty numbers we have defined before. So those multi-graded Betty numbers are some kind of finer information. And those are the ones we are going to look for. OK, so the objects we are going to, to study here are really quite simple. which are square free monomial ideas of degree 2, which are called edge ideals because of this uh, correspondence that we have between these ideals and simple graphs. This, this idea is an idea of this, this kind. Um, how can we get the graph? the graph? The vertices of the graph are exactly the variables 
in the ring. And whenever we have a generator that is a monomial of degree 2, we put an edge in the graph. And conversely, any time we have a simple graph, we have an edge ideal. Okay? So, here we have the, the algebraic object, here we have the combinatorial one, and we would like to relate both things. So, from the side of the combinatorics, that is when we deal with graphs, just let me give a few definitions that will be important. A cycle, everybody knows what is a cycle, a graph theory. So I will not um, even read the definition. It's exactly what you expect. Just let me mention that what I call a cycle will always have length at least four. Just not to, to, to say at some moment uh, uh, with four cycles uh, of length um, greater than four, triangles are not cycles for us in the talk. Okay. Um, so when we, have a, when we have a graph, we can consider subgraphs. And what we call induced subgraphs are the ones obtained removing um, vertices and all the edges involved. Okay, so uh, if we have, uh, uh, for example, this graph, this is not an induced subgraph because you cannot get this from this by removing an edge and uh, uh, vertices and the edges passing through these vertices. You should remove this, and this is not allowed. Okay. So, uh, but for example, this is an induced subgraph of this. Okay, because you remove this. Well, so this is a definition that we will need. And another definition is the complement of a graph, which is simply the graph on the same vertex set, where the edges are the ones that are missing. Okay. So in our graphs, I, I remind you, we have no loops. So uh, only, we only deal with uh, uh, simple graphs. OK, so an example, this is a cycle, a cycle of length 6. And this is its complement. Um, OK, so we put all the edges uh, that are missing in the complete graph here. Well, so. What is our aim here, or what is the general question? And we will address only part of these uh, questions. We would like to relate the Betty numbers of uh, an edge ideal to the combinatorics of the graph. How can we read uh, the information, the Betty numbers, or some of them, or the projective dimension, or the Castelnau-Mumford for regularity? We will see that in general, this will not, we will not do it, and this cannot be done uh, just this way. But we will more or less say something about this. We will give some information about some of the Betty numbers in the Betty diagram. OK, so let me start with a general statement that will be useful here. I will not read the theorem, just explain what it means. It's, uh, it's better. This is uh, once we, when we have a, uh, an edge idea and consider its Betty diagram, what this theorem means is that um, for any of the degrees that really appear, that goes from 2 to R, which is the regularity, um, the first step in the resolution where you have, in fact, really a, de a, a CZG of, de of degree, um, here would be i plus 3 at the i step, um, will satisfy this property. This means that if you look at the Betty diagram, then there is a staircase here where all the steps have height 1. This is completely wrong in general. In general, you can have a Betty diagram, and you can have, for example, a row, uh, a, a complete row of zeros. This is completely allowed. This will never, appear, will never happen uh, for the Betty diagram of an edge ideal. We know that here we have someone. This Betty number is the number of edges of our graph. Then, if we have someone 
in the third, in the third, uh, in the following row, it will there will be someone here, and then in the fourth row, for example, we we always know that all those will be zero, and that this one will be zero also, and the non-zero first entry will appear somewhere here. Okay, so this is the shape of the Betty diagram in general of an edge idea. In fact, we can be a little more precise. This was a question um, that Aldo Conca uh, asked us after reading uh, this result. He asked us if we could not improve the result this way, and indeed we could. Um, if, we, if we consider the columns in the Betty diagram, we can say that the maximal degree that appears in each column is at most two more than the maximal degree of the previous column. This is a little more precise because uh, this says here that this will occur, but also at the end of the resolution, this is also true because here we do not control exactly what is the behavior after this. But if you have a Betty number, a non, uh, a non-zero entry in your, in your Betty diagram at some step i, then at the following step, the, the, the non-zero, uh, there will be a non-zero um, Betty number at most here or here. But then here, this is zero. You cannot have a step of i2 at the beginning and also after in the resolution. This will never occur. And in fact, this is because in the Betty diagram, you can always say that if you have two zeros in one column, then you will have a zero here, always. So this guarantees this behavior here. We will see, why. We will see later why this is important. Well, these were the ingredients of the proof. Just let, let me mention, because this is very classical, these are the usual ingredients in this kind of results. Uh, say that the important tools are the Hoch's formula, which is the one that uh, allows to read the multigraded Betty numbers in terms of some reduced homologies in a simpli an associated simplicial complex we have here. So this gives a very precise way to compute them, even if it's not always very easy to do. And also this Meyer-Vitteri sequence is very useful. But let me go to the regularity two case. So there's a classical result by Froberg, which is uh, one of the first in this direction, which is uh, very beautiful. And that illustrates perfectly what I meant, well, here, in these kind of questions, and also here, when we have the commutative algebra side and the combinatorial side. So what Froberg's result says is that an edge ideal has regularity too. What does this mean? This means that there is no one outside of row two here. All the Betty numbers are here, or in a, in a, this is what I called before, when the ideal has linear resolution, this will occur if and only if, in the complement of the graph, there are no induced cycles of length more than four, as I said before. Okay? So, here is an example. If we consider, this is the idea which is, uh, I wrote on the blackboard there. If we look at the complement of this, we, we see that it is exactly a cycle. It's the sixth cycle. So, in the complement, there is an induced cycle, which is the sixth cycle. So what Froberg's theorem says is that this ideal does not have a linear resolution or does not have regularity too. There is someone outside the, the first row of the Betty diagram. And indeed, that's what's, what occurs. That's this one says that the resolution is not linear, OK? So this is the typical result that say something in the combinatorial uh, side, reading it uh, uh, on the, the algebraic side, reading it on the combinatorial one. 
Okay, you read on the graph this information on the betting numbers of the, of the age ideal. So, uh, what occurs in this, in this example, in fact, uh, this one here is completely general and we can study the whole family which is here, which are the complements of graphs. And in fact, if you consider a graph which is the complement of a cycle of any length, at least four, then there will always be this one here, which says that the resolution is not linear. But in fact, we can be more precise and we will, in this case, for this family, we can compute all the Betty numbers and we have a closed formula, which is this one. So this formula describes all the Betty numbers on the linear strand and says that at the step n minus 3, which is 3 less than the number of uh, variables, you have a 1 here which says that the resolution is not linear. Okay. So, if we focus on, uh, on Froberg's theorem again, it says that uh, the regularity is 2 if and only if there is no induced cycle in the complement. So when this does not occur, that is, when the regularity is at least 3, we know there is someone here, then we can be much more precise and we can say the following. This result says that, because Froberg says, okay, when the regularity is more than 2, then there is an induced cycle in the complement, and uh, let's call L the minimal length of a, of a cycle in the complement. So Froberg says, there is someone out in the Betty diagram outside this row. So what we can say is that, in fact, there would be someone um, in the th row we call 3 here, and the length, the minimal length of uh, an induced cycle in the complement says at which step of the resolution these nonlinear CCGs will first appear. It will be step L minus 3, yes? What does induced mean here? Sorry? Induced is what I said before. Induced is that the, the graph you obtain, the subgraph, is obtained by removing vertices and all the edges that go through these vertices. That, that means that, uh, uh, what, what I said before, if you have this graph, this is not induced. This is a subgraph, but it is not induced. Because you, can't go, you cannot get this by removing vertices and the, edge, uh, and the edges that go through. You should remove a vert, uh, an edge. This is not allowed. In an induced subgraph, you have all the, edges, all, uh, all the edges you had in the original one passing through the vertices you kept. Okay? So this is what induced means. So if you have your graph, and uh, you know that, it's re it's regularity, that the regularity of the IJ ideal is not two, you know that there is an induced cycle of length at least four in the complementary. You call L the least length of a cycle there. And then this L tells you at which step the, uh, the, the first nonlinear CCGs will appear. This will be step L minus three. We can also say that all the nonlinear CCGs will be concentrated there. That means that there is no one here. All this is zero, but this and the non-zero Betty number is this one. And we can also say who is this Betty number. This Betty number is exactly the number of induced cycles in the complementary of length L. Let's see this in an example. This would be better. This is an example. This, you will see clearly what it induced means. You have this graph, which is the one drawn here. This is the edge ID associated, or, the, or those uh, 10 uh, monomials correspond to the 10 edges you have here. This is the complement of the graph, and in the complement of the graph you can see that you have exactly <coughs> three, uh, sorry, one, two, yeah, uh, no, four, one, two, three, four, four cycles of length six, which are the ones that are drawn here. One is this, one is this, 
one is this. No, three, sorry, three. There are three ones, okay? The, the, the orange, the green, and the blue ones, okay? These are induced cycles. And you can see that, uh, for example, this cycle is not induced, the big one. You also see that there are no four cycles, induced four cycles there, okay? So, and no uh, five uh, cycles, just one, two, three, four, uh, no, and these are five cycles, sorry, okay? So, what the result says is that in the Betty diagram, you have a three here at the step two, two, which is five minus three. Okay, so this is the number of five cycles in the complementary of the graph. Okay, so that's what this result says exactly. Okay, um, so you see that this result depends only on the graph. So we could compute this uh, Betty number just looking at the combinatorics of the graph. But in general, the Betty numbers can also depend on the field and on the characteristic of the field. There is no reason for not depending on it, and indeed it depends. Here there's an example due to Katzman uh, where you can see that this ideal generated by 23 uh, monomials of degree two in 11 variables has this resolution when the field has characteristic zero and this resolution when the field has characteristic two. Okay, so what we have just said is that this number, the 37 here, cannot depend on the characteristic of the field because it's exactly the number of four cycles induced in the complementary of the graph associated to this. Of course, this I cannot draw because we, do not, we would not see anything. But there are 37, so this does not depend on the characteristic of the field. But what occurs in the next row depends on the characteristic. So we cannot hope to extend the results we have obtained for regularity two to regularity three in general. This example tells us this is not possible. And the projective dimension depends, yes. And indeed, uh, also the coin macaulay property, because this one is coin macaulay and this one is not. So, and the regularity, everything depends. Okay, so, but some of the Betty numbers do not depend, that's what. And, and so this one we have just seen does not depend. And more, of course. This, kind, this dependence on the characteristic of the field of the Betty numbers is quite not really understood at this moment. It's, it's kind of mysterious. The, the examples known are always this, of this kind, and also, uh, so this means that the, uh, the characteristic always affects the regularity, the projective dimension, this way. Okay, so um, our aim was to obtain something on the next row we want to see, we want to say something about uh, when uh, there are also people in the, in the Betty diagram outside the first two rows. So for this, we will work with bipartite graphs and show that in this case, for bipartite graphs, we can say something similar to the, case, the previous case. So what does bipartite mean? Bipartite means that you can split the, um, the set of uh, vertices of your graph in two, these joint subsets, such that all the edges of your graph grow from one set to the other. There is no one, uh, no edge between the, the vertices of the same, su same subset. Okay, so for example, cycles, even cycles, are bipartite graphs, okay? And for bipartite graph, we can define the notion of bipartite complement, which is the same definition as the complement we made before, but uh, not allowing uh, edges that which are forbidden. That means we keep in the bipartite uh, ambient, okay? So the bipartite complement uh, is the bipartite graph obtained by taking 
uh, all the edges that are missing in the complete bipartite graph. Okay, this is an example. This is the ten cycle, so it's bipartite. You see, if you have an even cycle, we can say that uh, half of the edges on this side, half of the edges are on this side, and you see that you have only edges between from one side to the other. The bipartite complement is this one, in this case. It's, so you see, in, in the complement, you would have also all the edges that are missing here and all the ones that are missing here. So if you lo we look at this example, we see that, in fact, in the bipartite of an even cycle, you have a one, again, appearing exactly where we want to detect if there is someone or not in the Betty diagram. There is someone here, and it's a one here. So we first studied the whole family of bipartite complements of an even cycle. And in this case, again, we could describe all the Betty diagram, which what will interest us is this one. But we could also give closed formula. Of course, they are quite ugly, uh, not as simple as before. but. They are completely closed combinatorial formulas, and uh, they describe, describe all the Betty numbers. This is one of the first row, and this one the second row. And on the third row, you have this one here in this position. And this is a kind of uh, result which is similar to the one of Froberg, which says exactly when, for bipartite graphs, there will be someone in the third row, row. When in, indeed it says that the regularity is less than three, that is, there are only two rows on the, uh, one or two rows in the Betty diagram. If and only if, in the bipartite complement of your bipartite graph, you have no induced cycle of length more than six. So the cycles, again, in this bipartite complement are the ones that will say uh, their, their existence will say there is someone outside the first two rows of your Betty diagram. Okay? So, and this can be improved again in a very similar result of the one as before. If you have an edge ideal whose associated graph is bipartite, if its regularity is more than three, that means if there is someone outside those two rows, you know there is someone in the fourth row by uh, the, the result on the shape we saw before that this cannot be a, a zero row, there is someone. Then this will occur at the step L minus 4 where L is the minimal length of an induced cycle in the bipartite complement of your bipartite graph. Okay, so this, these cycles say at which step this uh, first mm, Betty number outside the first two rows will appear, but it also says that there will be no one outside this. I mean, all the CZGs would be concentrated here, here. And again, the number of cycles of this length, this minimal length, gives exactly the Betty number. So, uh, um, well, I, I would say this in, in the example. Let, let's see an example. This is, a, again, an example. You have this graph. It's a bipartite graph. This is the associated edge ideal. This is its bipartite complement. And in the bipartite complement, you can see that you have two um, cycles, induced cycles, of length 6. OK, so the first result says that then there will be someone, and this is what occurs, someone in the, in the third row of the Betty diagram. Here, there's someone some, which is not zero. The length, which is six, gives the step of the resolution. In this step of the resolution, you know that there is a non-zero Betty number here. And the number of graphs, which is two here, gives you this two here. There's a, there are two. Uh, CZG, minimal CZGs uh, contributing to this Betty number here. Uh, I forgot to tell you that uh, indeed we get this working on the multigraded uh, uh, Betty numbers. In fact, these cycles, we have a more precise information. 
each of these cycles, this six cycle, gives exactly the multi-degree of the corresponding CZG. And each cycle contributes with one in the Betty diagram, in the Betty number. Okay, so this two is the sum of the, the two degrees that come uh, from the two cycles. And unfortunately, we cannot follow, again, for the same kind of reason. Uh, in Olinda, in 2009, I remember in the, one of the talks of Herzog, he, wa he asked if, uh, if the Betty numbers in general of a bipartite uh, edge ideal could depend or not on the characteristic of the field. And this was answered in the negative by, with this example by uh, Dalili and Kumini, who showed that, yes, uh, even for bipartite graph, there is a dependence on the characteristic of the field. And this is the example they give. And you see that it just says that at the next row, again as before, there is something that occurs in characteristic 2 that does not occur in characteristic 0. So, uh, so indeed, we cannot go further even for, uh, for, for bipartite graphs. OK, so this. Is the only exception? No, no. There are, the, there are other examples. The, the, what seems to be always a pattern is, that, is the, um, this behavior with this one one here that, uh, that destroys the regularity and the projective dimension. It's an, well, <laughs> it's uh, mysterious. So this, what we see that th this 30 is the number of edges or number of generators. Of course, this does not depend on the characteristic of the field. This, this 135, this is the number of four cycles in the complement of this graph. And this 90 is the number of uh, cycles in the bipartite complement of this graph, okay, which are, will be of length 6, and this will be of length 4, okay? But then what occurs here depends on the characteristic of the field. So if we want to go further, we have to, again, spe uh, specialize and work with a smaller family because this one, uh, for this one, we cannot go further, okay? So that's more or less what I wanted to talk today. Just wanted to put a couple of pictures. This one is not the one of this morning. <laughs> this was 10 years ago. And uh, so I'm very glad to be here again and uh, really hope that we will celebrate. You see that the number of participants is growing <laughs> exponentially. And so I hope that in 2022, we'll all be there, here again and with more people uh, to celebrate and, and in the roof and take a photo on the roof of the IMPA. <laughs> and uh, so happy birthday, Aaron. Happy birthday, Steve. It's always a pleasure to be here with you. And I will dedicate uh, some special words to Aaron uh, now. Uh, since I'm a mathematician, and not a poet. I had to steal the words from someone else to tell you uh, this. So this is from Marguerite Yourcenar. And uh, I will just add something uh, from myself. So it says, uh, l'amitié, and I would say, comme les mathématiques, est avant tout certitude. <laughs> C'est ce qui la distingue de l'amour. Elle est aussi respect et acceptation totale euh, d'un autre être. So, thank you, Aaron, for everything. Thank you.